Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Glad you joined us today as we spend meaningful moments with the master looking at the word of God together. Well, we started this series on Monday, No Success Without a Test, and we saw how at the end, the last verse in, in Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were promoted. But from verses 1 through 29, they were tested because there's no success without a test. And we saw yesterday that the king created an image of himself and he wanted to be worshipped. We create images of ourselves as well. We, we, we want to project ourselves as being someone or something that we are not. And this, this series of week, this uh, lesson, for example, this week is about success. And usually when we think about success, we think about popularity, the P words, popularity, power, prestige, possessions. But success is, from God's perspective, is being who you are, being the person God created you to be, and being who God created you to be and doing what God created for you to do. That's what success is. Finding out who you're supposed to be and being that person and finding out what God wants you to do and doing it. That's what success is. Well, this king has an image, he, he has an image issue. He's the king, but he still wants people to bow down and worship him. And we worship our idols too. They're not made of gold, but sometimes they're people that we worship that uh, in fact, they are more important to us than anyone or anything, including God. And the king said, anyone who does not bow down and worship the image of me will be thrown into a fiery furnace. And everyone did. They had to stop what they were doing and worship King Nebuchadnezzar, the golden idol, as soon as they heard the sound of the music. And everybody did it except for three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their co-workers, when they found that they were not being compliant to the commands of the king, turned them in. They turned them in. They were snitches. And they were snitching because they wanted their jobs. They were envious of them. And co-workers often do that. You know, it's, we could get so far in terms of workers' rights if instead of turning on each other in the marketplace, in the workplace, we would turn to each other and form unions in order to uh, get better benefits for working people. But instead of turning to each other in, forms, in terms of unions, we turn on each other instead of working together for a common good. And this is what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were the victims of sabotage to a certain extent and snitches of co-workers who reported to the king, those Jews who you put in authority are not compliant. They're not bowing down. Well, look at verse 13. When the king finds out that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, were not bowing down, it says in verse 13, furious with rage, which means not only does he have ego issues because he feels like he has to be worshipped, but he has anger management issues. He, he flew into a rage. Now, everybody else in the whole empire is worshipping him, but he's messed up because three Jews just decide that they will be people of conviction. And he's he's losing it. He's he's lost grip. So it says he flew into a rage. Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, so these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. In other words, I'm going to give you another chance to get this thing right, gentlemen. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? That is a critical statement the king makes, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? 
So what's going on here? First of all, we recognize that the king has some serious anger management issues. He blows up when things don't go his way. How's your, how's your anger management doing? Don't forget that the word anger and danger is separated just by one letter, and that is the letter D. Put a D in front of the word anger and you've got danger. Now, there's something wrong with anger. Anger is sometimes a justifiable response to injustice and cruelty. Uh, and for and 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 the lack of fair play. But when everything sends you into a tizzy, then you got to be careful. You're adding maybe that D to the word anger, and that has become danger. And so he brings these Hebrew boys in, and he gives them a chance to reconsider. He says, "Now, now I heard you don't worship my God. You don't worship my golden image. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crank up the music again one more time." to give you a chance to reconsider. I want you to think about this. First of all, they would not bow. They would not bow. They would not bow. And they would not bend. They would not bow and they would not bend. He's going to try to get them to bend and they would not bend. They're going to be men of convictions. Please notice that the king challenged God in verse 15. In verse 15, notice what he says again. In the last verse, it says, the last sentence, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hands? So what do we have here? Listen to me very carefully. The battle that is waging in this story is not between the king and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The battle is a battle, and the challenge is a challenge, not to these Hebrew boys, but to the God of the Hebrew boys. He's pointing at God and saying, what God is able to save you if I throw you into this fiery furnace? He is doing the same thing that Pharaoh did when the children of Israel were trying to get out of bondage uh, under Moses. Remember what Pharaoh said. He says, who is God that I should listen to him? And what happens with all of the plagues that wrecks Egypt and Moses is able to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage is that God is simply introducing himself to Pharaoh saying, you want to know who I am? Let me show you who I am. Let me show you my might. Let me show you my power. And here Nebuchadnezzar is basically challenging the God of these Hebrew boys. What God can serve? In other words, God, you can't save these boys. Please remember that when you are in a situation and you're standing up for God, God will stand up for you. You take care of God's business and God will take care of your business. Please know the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. You need to think of you know, look, I, I'm just doing what God told me to do. God, I'm trusting you. I believe that you are going to fight this battle. That's the way you have to think about it, that this battle, you are in a righteous fight, and this battle, amen, is the Lord's. Now, notice that they are experiencing a trial. They got haters, co-workers who snitched on them. They got a king with an image problem and anger management issues. And they're on the potential of becoming ashes, incinerated in, a, in, a, in, the, in the furnace of Babylon because they are men of conviction. They've done nothing wrong, but they're being tested. Don't think that just because you're being tested that you've done something wrong. God allows us to be tested because no one experiences success without a test. There's no success without a test. So the king gives them a mandate and says, look, I'm gonna play the music for you one more time and give you another chance. He thought he was, he thought he was being lenient. I'm gonna play it one more time, you bow down uh, and everything's cool. We just forget about it. You can go on with your life. You can go on with your career. These, and these Hebrew boys, by the way, are in their 30s. These are young men in their 30s. They have aspirations. And King says, look, just bow down. Everything's cool. And in fact, I'm sure they were being tempted to say, you know, we can bow down 
with our knees, but in our mind, we're saying, God, we really don't mean it. They could have compromised, but let's see what they do. Tomorrow, we're going to find out how they respond to the king's mandate, their second chance to bow down. Let's see what they do tomorrow. All right. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, sometimes uh, we experience testing. We've done nothing wrong, but never let us forget that the battle is not ours. It's yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, I want to thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. Today is Wednesday, Bible study night. I've been away, but I'll be back tonight. So look, you come and join us. Don't forget to tune in to ssclive.org. We start at 630 with the pre-worship experience with the very brilliant and gifted Crystal Goodner Spratt. So join us at 630 and then we'll have worship at 7. I'll bring a message that I think will bless you immensely tonight in Bible study. If you don't have a church home, we extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Everybody needs to be a part of a church. Look, you contact us here, uh, new start at ssclive.org, and we shall get back with you. But until then, look, during COVID-19, look, you remember to stay safe, stay safe, and stay sane. And always remember that God is in control. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow. Be blessed.